Hello, hello, and welcome everyone to my Love Dare with God study. And I cannot tell you just how thrilled I am that you have made the commitment uh, to begin this journey of daring to love God at a new level. Um, for some of you, this may be really easy. For others, it may be a bit uncomfortable. You still may be thinking, okay, this is something that's set out for married couples. But um, one of the viewers pointed out something really important to me that she said made sense to her and hadn't really quite clicked in my head, but it does. It makes perfect sense in that uh, we are the bride of Christ. So it is a marriage in that sense, and it is a covenant with God. So how do we go about getting that deep love with God? We know that he loves us unconditionally, but we're perfectly imperfect humans. And so the way we go about uh, carrying out love in our everyday lives may have many different faces. And uh, so we'll just see what God has in store on this journey. And I'm very excited uh, to, to see what he does. I know that may sound silly, but I am. I'm just, for so long, I've been the only person that did this and had any thoughts about it and to get to that place which was as I mentioned before was very slow because I kept wanting to be so good for God and just to do him justice in this study and completely forgot about well okay duh just take your hands off of it Salita let him do it and it'll be perfect it will meet anyone and everyone exactly where they are and uh, all I got to do is plant the seed and he'll do the rest. So uh, let's get started. First of all, your supplies. Um, you need the love dare and uh, you need to go on to my blog, which if you're watching the video, then you've already found that, uh, salidac.com and uh, there are links there that will take you to um, a linked site of mine for the study itself and but all the videos uh, will be available for you there's a study schedule uh, that shows you the availability dates of each week of the study and we're gonna do um, three to four days a week instead of one one dare one study per day um it's like i said before it's doable but um god just put it on my heart to slow down and not not push through it so fast to let him really uh get into those those grooves with you to help you establish what may be some very new thought processes and habits. So you need your book, The Love Dare, and it's by uh, Stephen and Alex Kendrick. You can get it online at Amazon. You can get it at Barnes and Noble. You may even be able to find it at a thrift store um, or like half price books, something like that. You can even get um, a Kindle version that you can watch. You don't have to have a Kindle. You can watch it on, there's an app for laptops, for phones, for um, iPads, or whatever type of tablet device you might have. So it is readily available. And um, since I'm providing a printout each week, you don't necessarily have to have one to be able to write in. I, li I like paper. I like touching things and, and so that I can highlight and make notes in the margin and things like that. So, uh, a hard copy is my preference, but do whatever works for you. And um, and even if you decide to, you know, down the road that you want to switch up, that's okay too. Um, what I will have available for you um, each week at the beginning of the study, there will be a link for each dare day um, that goes right along with the book. Uh, I will. Uh, you know, write whatever the dare was that was listed in the book and then provide a little bit of my commentary, which for the most part is taken from when I originally did this study in 2011. 
and it's hard to think that it's been that many years, but it has, but God's been doing a lot of work in the meantime. So that's a good thing because of course I have hopefully a better perspective on the way I looked at things. And so hopefully I can be able to uh, communicate better to you the way that I was viewing the study and taking it from a relationship with a spouse to a relationship with God. So each week you'll have a separate link for each dare day, the love is patient, love is kind, etc. And then there will be a handout. And each handout, um, I put mine and punched it in a little three ring notebook uh, that is eight and a half by 11 in half. So um, also made a cover for those of you that asked for a cover. And each week we'll print out, you know, week one we'll have um, the uh, love is like for day one, love is patient. And then what I mentioned before, we're going to have the think, write, and pray. And that's my take on the dare itself. And then you'll have plenty of room to write your notes. Um, and then I'll provide a separate little instruction detail on printing um, the the weekly studies. I hope I made it really easy that they will print in a booklet format. So if you have a double-sided uh, printer, it'll you know print everything. You just have to make sure you always say short edge binding. Um, or if you don't, you can just print the odd pages and then print the even, even pages, you know, running the paper back through and you'll be good. And if not, you can just do single pages and fold them in. Uh, that doesn't work if you want to have. I haven't thought about that. Just cut it in half and then put them in order. Each page is numbered for each week because that's something I, I tend to get a little confused from time to time. So that helps me and hopefully it'll be helpful for you too. So um, let's get started on day one. Love is patient. Um, when I read through the initial commentary, you know, I looked at the, the scripture, which is Ephesians 4, 2, be completely humble and gentle, be patient, bearing with one another in love. And boy, doesn't that sound simple, but it's a little bit more difficult to put into action. And one of the things that, that stood out to me throughout this commentary was that, you know, the authors, you know, pointed out that love helps you settle down and begin extending mercy to those around you. And isn't that the truth? I remember years ago that I had too much on my plate and I was bouncing from one thing to another and was really before I even started opening a Bible. And I found that I was just, I was so tapped out because there was no way I was allowing God to pour his love into me and receive it. And in turn, I didn't really have much left to give anyone else, let alone a complete stranger. Like, you know, maybe someone working a register at Target. And um, to this day, I wish I could find a lady that I was short tempered with and uh, for through no fault of her own. And I think, you know, we're human. We all have those moments and you know, hopefully what we can take from that is a learning experience that, you know, we need to extend grace. And to extend grace, you have to have patience because it's taking your own natural reactions to a situation and taking a step back, taking a pause, taking a breath, counting to 10, whatever your thing is to help you regroup. And that's what patience is all about. But it, it's a diligent effort. It's not something that comes naturally to us. Some of us may be a little more gifted with it than others. Um, and, you know, some people just, I mean, they seem to have the patience of a saint. 
I'm not one of those people. I'm still learning. Uh, but they, the authors also mention that patience brings an internal calm to an external storm. And when I read that, I immediately thought about a coworker who was always so composed. And me, I'm one of those people that I tend to wear my heart on my sleeves. You get me excited, you know I'm excited. You get me riled, and unfortunately, you know I'm riled. And I used to, you know, it was an insecurity that I would laugh off. And um, But it's not laughable. And it took a lot of work and diligence in my day-to-day -day life. And I mean, God God did a lot of, <laughs> bless his heart, I feel like I'm, I'm a full-time job for him. But thank goodness God is God and he's got plenty of, of um, room for everybody. And um, so I don't have to feel like I'm hogging all of his time. But it's one of those things in watching her, she was someone I aspired to be like. And Adrian. I love you, sister. <laughs> of the things I miss from work, I, I miss that relationship. But I have other relationships today, too, that um, are just as meaningful. But, you know, she's a special one. Anyway, goodness. So you'll see I'm also a crier, a weeper, whatever you want to call it. They used to, gosh, what did they call me in Bible study? I don't remember now, but I was, I was the one I cried every week for a full year and I just you know obviously I had a lot of pain to let go there were plenty of tears but anyway so getting back to patience and I'm sorry that's one of those other things that you'll learn about me I kind of you know deviate around but I there is a a point in there somewhere you may just have to exercise patience with me and I appreciate that thank you in advance but, uh, you know, that it talks about how patience is more than biting your tongue. And it's more than just like, you know, putting on the emotional brakes. It's of really just saying, whoa, not wow, you know, <laughs> there's, a, there's a difference. And that if you just like, you know, Lord, I, I need you, I need you in this moment, help me. And that's not a bad weakness. That's um, a courageous thing to know that you need God um, and to not be fearful of asking for help. And, you know, and that help may come from some of your accountability partners, whether it's a good friend, a relative, um, someone that will be accountable in love, not in a critical way, and but to allow yourself to be open enough to hear some tough words at times. And um, that's something that um, I think we all struggle with uh, on to some degree. And, uh, but find your person and you already know have somebody in mind but you have to you have to invite them in to 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 help hold you accountable and um to not be fearful of you letting emotions ride over uh, those caring words that you need to hear so um it is uh one of the other things was that it said that patience is a choice to control your emotions rather than allowing your emotions to control you. And it shows discretion instead of returning evil for evil. So um, I rarely like to think about the lack of patience as evil, but it certainly isn't good. So, you know, is there somewhere in between? between? Probably so. Uh, but that kind of hit home with me and um, gave me that extra um, desire to treat others the way I want to be treated and uh, to not, you know, coat something in tough love when 
it's just tough and love is no part of the equation but um, this first day love is patient and uh, the you know the, the authors made this one very short most of them are but um, but it's powerful so give yourself time to just really let that soak in in my, in my uh, discussion points on it uh, the thing I taught I thought about you know that the dare was to um, demonstrate patience uh, with your spouse and to say nothing negative and initially when I thought about oh, okay well then how do I do that with God how do you know like how do I do that with God I'm not negative towards God well maybe in 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 a sense that if you're not doing one thing then you are possibly doing quite the opposite. So if I'm not looking to exercise patience with his timing and his plan of a matter going on in my life that I, A, I want to know the whole picture and I want to know it now and, you know, or I want it to happen now. I'm tired of waiting. And to really take that step back and, and just give it to God and lay it at the cross. And Lord, thank you for not giving me everything I ask for when I ask for it. Because chances are, if I did get those things, I would be in a huge pile of mess today. So, um, reminding myself of those times when it has you know always but to paid off it's always paid off to be patient but to think of the reward of patience um and as opposed to thinking of it in a way of denying myself something so hopefully that makes a little sense for you and um but uh, to just to go on through this and um, when you start your think right pray uh, I really hope that you will write out your prayers it's something that I did and you know to go back over it it was like oh wow you know thank you Lord for for speaking through me and that's to me is always um, the the sign of of my heart being open uh, is to go back and reflect on something um, in a situation or a conversation what have you and to know when I mean it's night and day that I can I can tell oh yeah that time I, I just gave it to God and I was good with that and there are other times maybe like writing a study that you can literally see the heel marks for miles and years of dragging my feet on on doing something that he's called me to do and and uh, I would be eager and excited to hear from you you know do you have a situation that you feel like God's really put something on your heart but you for whatever reason haven't stepped forward in faith have you been patient enough with God to show you what you need to fulfill the thing that he's called you to do? And it doesn't have to be something huge. It could be something really small, like stepping out of your comfort zone to speak to a neighbor that you never make time to speak to. Or, you know, who knows what. I, I'm just, you know, thinking off the top of my head. But um, I would love for you to share, um, you know, situations of where you've exercised patience or when you haven't exercised patience and, and what those two scenarios look like and the outcomes. Because, you know, often... Um, for me, that's why I write, because it's too easy for me to sweep things under the rug. Oh, I just don't want to think about that. And now today, I just, I 
my memory isn't what it used to be and so I forget a lot and if I don't write it down um, I'll I'll completely forget about it so for me now writing is is even more important than than it used to be so that I can remember big things and little things so as you go on through tonight uh, take your time print out uh, the information if you want to just kind of you know run through each day and then you know to let it filter and go back just find whatever ever rhythm works for you and I will be um, praying for each of you that are decided to start on the study um, if you have a specific prayer request please leave something in the comments for me and um, and I will pray for you and I consider that to be um, a privilege to pray for others and um, I guess that's it this is the end of video one hopefully it hasn't been too long you're not asleep and uh, you're raring to go and get started with the set study so thank you so much for joining in and blessings to you all good night